Hello everyone, I'm Johnny Rose and uh, this is Bully Boy Carter and it's Monday, so it's Single Wrestlers Day here on uh, Rose and Carter Do The JRB. It's Bully Boy Carter's pick this week and you've chosen Butch Reed. Yeah, um, big fan of Butch Reed, like all of, like his whole career, no matter what he'd done, where he was, I've been a, always been a big fan and I don't think you're expecting me to say Butch Reed, so I thought I'd do a bit of a, you know, surprising one. So that's why I went with him. Yeah. Bit, bit, bit from the far field. That's right. His name is Bruce Franklin Reed, born July the 11th, 1954 in Kansas City. Uh, wrestled as Hacksaw Butch Reed and the Natural in WF. He was trained by Ron Etchinson who I've never heard of, and I can't find literally any information on him whatsoever, but he's clearly done a good job, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Um, wrestled 1978 till 2011, so a good old run there as well. Pretty hell. Um, right. He started in Central States, which was kind of where he was from anyway. Uh, his first championship win was a tag title, so, uh, Southern States Tag Team Championship, with a, a fella named Jerry Roberts. Now, I'd never heard of Jerry Roberts, but on the Wikipedia there was a link to it, and it went to Jacques Rougeau. So, oh. Jacques Rougeau was Jerry Roberts, didn't know that, but they beat Bob Sweetan and Mike George. Then he went to Florida, then Georgia, and then his break came in Mid-South in 83. So, what's that, five years in, was like the big break. Mm. Uh, in Mid-South for Bill Watts. Feuded with Jim Duggan, briefly with Jim the Anvil, Terry Taylor, and then a big feud was with Junkyard Dog. But apparently that was cut short because Junkyard Dog, like, just towards the blow-off match at the end, he fucked off to WBF. So that kind of shit on Butch Reed a little bit. Yeah. Um, he went to the AWA from there very briefly as Jimmy Garvin's bodyguard. And then back to Mid-South, where he wrestled Flair for the NWA title uh, and feuded with Dick Slater. Um, Central States, you know, just going home for a couple of months and then it's where he teamed with Rufus R. Jones. And then he turned on Rufus R. Jones and joined Slick, who will take to WWF with him later. They'll both go as a package. But I the did. odd thing I thought there was... Rufus R. Jones, Slick is Rufus R. Jones' real-life dad. So, yeah, there's a nice little family connection there. All right. He'll go to WBF with Slick. Coco at WrestleMania 3, which mm -hmm. was a bit of sort of throwaway match, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, but then he went into matches with Ricky Steamboat for the IC title after that. Uh, feuded with uh, Billy Graham and Don Morocco. That was towards the end of his run, really. Uh, he holds the claim of being the first person eliminated out of the first Royal Rumble in 88. So that's quite a, it's quite a cool claim, isn't it? <laughs> Wrestled Savage at WrestleMania 4 in the tournament. Uh, 88 to 92 in WCW, it says. But um, I've seen him in WCW in 93, so I reckon Wikipedia's lying to me. Right. Uh, it was managed by J.J. Dillon at the start, and then J.J. sold the contract to Hiro Matsuta. Right. Uh, tagged with Ron Simmons in the masks. First off, my manager, tag, uh, Doom was the manager. Sorry, Woman was the manager, Nancy. Yeah. And then in comes Teddy Long. Shitload of pay-per-view appearances as Doom. Uh, some clashes against the Steiners, proper high-impact match at Capital Combat. Uh, oh, the street fight against Barry Windham and Arn Anderson at Starcade 90. Uh, in early 91, there was heat with Reed and Ron Simmons against the Freebirds at Wrestle War, which led to Super Brawl in the, in the cage against Ron Simmons. So quite a short-lived team, really, Doom was. Yeah, and they then, were good. It's really like 92 to sorry, carry on. Mate. No, I was just saying, I really like Doom, they should have been together for a bit longer. I'd have thought because yeah, I thought, they were, I thought they were a great team to be honest. Like turning Ron Simmons babyface was a good move, you know, because that kind of got over. And I think they mm. could have done it with Reed as well, really. Yeah, yeah, 
Um, shed load of Indies after that. He was USWA champion when he feuded with Junkyard Dog again. Uh, Global, where he's North American champion. Uh, wrestled lots for Harley Race and his um, WLW promotion. Um, and that kind of, that, that, that's kind of him, really. He stayed on the Indies till 2011. But like I said, I've seen him in WCW in 93, but there's no mention of that at all on Wikipedia. But he tagged with the Barbarian quite a bit. Um, yeah, so quite a, quite a varied career. Been about everywhere, but primarily he was a villain. Um, mm-hmm. A fucking hell of a strong bastard, wasn't he? I was. He, was, fucking, he, was he looked like he was knocking your fucking jaw off with them punches. Probably was. <laughs> fucking, they look good, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah, we watched four matches. What was your first, mate? My first one was from... It was from 25th of March, 1983, at the Sam Houston Coliseum. And it was against uh, Marty Lunde that went on to become, obviously, that's Arn Anderson. So. Arn Anderson, yeah. You are? Arn Anderson, winner. Yeah. This was a fucking, this was a great match. This was literally like, I'd never seen this match before. I didn't know what to expect because it, apparently it was uh, Butch's first, like, match in Texas or something. Um you know, he'd been around, what, like five years by this. Did you say 78 he started? About yeah. Right, isn't it? So about five years. He was new, and um, this was a fucking... I didn't, like I said, I didn't know what to expect, but um, they told a great story, and some of the spots I've never seen, like, fucking anywhere. Real simple stuff. But um, just trying to, like, read my notes here. What um, They start off with, like, a strong tie-up. Uh Ends up with like an arm drag and an arm bar by a uh, Butch Reed, and then there's a point he goes. He keeps going back to the arm, and then there's a point where he'll like he'll monkey. Um, oh, where are we? There's a, oh yeah, he, right at the start of the match. The first point of the match is actually a back body drop, and they kind of work that back body drop into a certain different like points of the match. So I think he he hits one, and then he goes for another one. But as he goes, for, as he goes for another back body drop, like Arn like notices what he's doing, so he jumps over him. Fucking Butch turns around, Arn throws a punch. Butch blocks it, and then fucking he blocks it, and then literally just gives him a massive fucking arm drag and goes back on the arm bar. Like everything keeps going back to the arm, and he does it for like you know how Steamboat would do it for fucking ages and yeah. ages. It was a similar situation. He just keeps going back to the arm thing. But that's still exciting because the shit they put in between. Yeah, like you know, yeah, the, the whole st- Steamboat versus Flair's whole fucking hour match was pretty much Ed Luck and Armbar, but it yeah, was still yeah. exciting because the little bits they put in between, well timed and everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it was great. There's so many good things in this match. Like there was a point where, again, throwing the backdrop in there, where I think he goes for the back body drop. Again, Arn jumps over him again. Arn goes for it. He jumps over Arn and then turns around and fucking hits him with a drop kick. Arn flies over the top rope, fucking calling for a DQ because he was thrown over the top rope. But, like, even though it was a drop kick and it was, like, in the middle of the ring, like, Arn takes this fucking amazing, like, fucking over the top rope, like, fucking dramatic, like, bump over the top. It looked absolutely fantastic. Um you know, you know of... that top rope brawl, right? That, that was yeah. primarily NWA thing. Mm. Um, you know, certainly a Southern thing. I think Smoky Mountain did it, but that gets shit on a lot. But I think it's a fucking brilliant rule because you can use. It's so easy to use as a villain. You can like, use oh, it in you know, different I, ways. I, I really like rules, and I like, I like, you know, telling people the rules because if you if you ain't got no rules, you can't break no rules, and if you can't break no rules, you got no villains. You know, yeah. that's why I think it's hard to have really good fucking heat now because punching people now ain't a fucking cheating. It should be because you can't punch. But, you know, years ago, grab headlock, turn away from the referee, fucking bosh, was big heat. But now mm. you can't, like, people are just being like, he's just punching them in the head. They don't see it as a cheating, you know, it, which I think, you know, if the referees bollock them a little more or fucking they're making a big deal of it or you make it, 
slightly more public what the actual rules are and that they're being in, you know enforced. Uh, yeah. Totally getting off track here, but I'm a fucking massive fan of rules. Yeah, I, I like the rule myself. I, I don't see why people shun it. To be honest, the over the top thing it's it's. I mean, why would you do that? It's a fucking wrestling match anyway. It's a mat based sport. So why the fuck would you would you not disqualify someone for throwing them outside the ring? You're not meant to be outside the ring. You know, yeah. I, I fucking I think about. I, I overthink a lot of things, but I think everything from, uh, you know, a punter's point of view. So, so you're not meant to be out of the ring. It was like they put the mats around the ring. Why the fuck do you put the mats around the ring? You're not meant to go out of the ring. What's the fucking point? I'm all for Bill Watts. I am. Give me Bill Watts WCW's rules every day of the week. Um. So yeah, there's a point towards the end of the match where like. There's a tiny little miscommunication. I don't think anyone knew what they were doing, but like literally it was a half a second spot and fucking they fixed it real quickly. So I'll fucking forget about that bit. But I mean, I've put, it was a fucking phenomenal match. Such a good match. And I've even put after it, I put like, uh, I put great match. I put, you need to watch it. It was that good. It was so fucking entertaining. Like, real, real good. So, yeah. Can you think how new Arn Anderson would have been there as well? Yeah, well, what year did he start? I don't, I don't actually know. Cause it he couldn't had, have been far off fucking 83 anyway, could it? Must have been about then. Hmm. Yeah, I'd have thought so. But no. I'm an old what man. was the actual finish? Oh, the finish was a fucking flying, just a basic flying shoulder tackle from um, Butch yeah. Reed. He does and that I, quite a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, and I was surprised. I put actually down here, because I didn't know how long like Arn had been around, but I'd assumed I'd have thought Arn would have gone over just because it'd been Arn. But like you say, he was probably quite new then anyway, but I was quite surprised. And it, it, was, it was just Marty Lundy as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he, they were reacting to him though. He was quite, quite a villain, like, you know, um, so they knew he wasn't that, but um, yeah, flying shoulder tackle for the win. Um, but yeah, great match. Real good match. Winner. Uh, my next one is Mid South. It just says 1985, no actual, you know, time period as such. Versus Buddy Landau. Uh, uh, I've got JR. That. That's huh? my second one. Is it? There we go. Uh, <laughs> JR says at the start, doesn't he, that they were former friends. So I'm guessing they were like, you know, a team at some point or something. Yeah. Uh, it was primarily. Reed beating the piss out of Buddy Landau, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. It was more of a, a one of those matches that you need to kind of get the backstory on, I think, to truly appreciate what was going on. Because, yeah, you know, with them being former friends, you could kind of guess that Buddy Landau would have shit on Reed somewhere along the line, which makes Reed pissed off, you know, so he's going after him now. Yeah. Um, just a couple of uh, notes that I kind of made along the way, right, was Carl Fergie was the referee. He was a relation of Lawler and Honky Tonk Man. Uh, Akbar's the manager of Buddy Landau. Fucking love Akbar. Uh, Joel Watts doing the commentary. Bill Watts' his son. Right. With, uh, with Jim Ross. With JR, yeah. Um, yeah, it's literally fucking beating the piss out of Buddy Landau until a few eye pokes come along. Yeah. Uh, now Buddy's on the attack. Uh, I've never seen Buddy Landau bump as well as he did in this, but I suppose you might not have a choice wrestling Butch Reed. I, I was going to say, like, his, his bumping was fucking real, real good, like, real like, dramatic. But there's a certain, there's a couple of certain spots in this match that I really, really like. Like, I like the start where he just fucking shoves him. He goes to, like, fucking give him a backhander or whatever, just catches his fucking hand yeah. and. I thought that was quite funny. And he, he literally holds his hand, and he, but Buddy is selling like a fucking dream, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, yeah. and um, it's the point where he's where he's begging him to hit him, and he fucking clocks him one, like you know, <laughs> 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 fucking just but, but, him out. But he's such a fucking like a cocky ass. He's like one of them cool bastard kids at school that like just used to walk around like they are in the fucking place that you wanted to slap. Um, yeah. I fucking love Buddy Landau. Um, um, well, so, oh, there was that fucking... Oh, yeah. yeah, carry on. Go on. 
I was going to say the finish here was a shoulder block. Um, yeah. But JR says forearm. Which yeah. It clearly I, fucking wasn't Jim Ross. I wrote that as well at the end. I've wrote, I've wrote uh, flying shoulder tackle by Reed for the win. And then I put flying forearm with a question mark because it was never a fucking forearm in my book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Jim Ross was watching, but it clearly wasn't that. He was probably looking at the fucking barbecue. <laughs> but, but there was one there was one other spot uh, as well. It, it, it was enjoyable, but yeah. Um go on just, then. Yeah, there's just like one spot that I thought was pretty funny. When he goes for a pin and that Landell puts his fucking foot on the rope and just keeps it there and he's like he just fucking jumps on it, you know, does the old fucking jump on you you know when your foot's on the rope and stuff, starts working on the leg. Oh yeah, I've written that. Yeah, uh, hang on, I'll fucking, I remember. Right I just here we go. Butch takes advantage and starts working the leg. So yeah, um, but his foot's on the rope, fucking, and and, and yeah. Butch fucking jumps on it. It's it's yeah. really fucking clever, that isn't it? I've never seen like that, anything like that before. To be fair, uh, fucking eighty three, eighty no, yeah, eighty five, and it's like fucking yeah. Never seen that before or since. Like, uh, we fucking uh, will do now. We've seen it. I'll fucking do all the time now. <laughs> it's going to be four times a fucking match now, that. <laughs> yeah, so that's that was, uh, yeah, that's number two. So was that your, that was your second one as well, weren't it? Shall I do my third one then, as that was your second? My was, second one. That was your first one, weren't it? That was, yeah, that was my first one, yeah. Yeah, my first one, yeah. Do you want to do your second one then, or? Uh, well, yeah. My second one was April the 11th, 88, WWF versus Don Morocco. Oh, she was a fucking hell. belter. I've done that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking belted it. I really enjoyed this. This was fucking, yeah, it was great, that was. Uh, Butch, Butch with the promo to the old fucking washed up Billy Graham at the start. Yeah. It's got Saturday night event on the apron, but I don't think it is. But I think they might have taped something else at the same time. Right, I mean, like TV, but I, I could be wrong. It could have been Saturday night's main event. Um, Alfred Hayes and Bobby Enon commentating, which is a straight. Well, I thought it was a strange combination. It was, but I love Alfred Hayes on commentary. Like I really yeah. think he's rated Alfred. Everyone knows how good Heenan is, but Hayes don't really get the fucking recognition. They're a bit of a comedy duo, aren't they? To be fair, and they kind of bounce off each other real well. Yeah, um, but yeah, after the promo, fucking Don Morocco is pissed off now, ain't he? So mm. he's bumping Butch Reed, atomic drop, out goes Butch, then fucking Billy's involved. Go on, Billy, lad. He's, he's having a fucking go now. Uh, back in he goes, and it kind of slows down a bit. Um, Don stays on him. Slicks with Butch again, like fucking, like we mentioned before, Slick went to WWF with him. Uh in, this must have been early in Don Morocco's kind of baby face run because Bobby Heenan mentions Fuji being with Don Morocco. Right, okay. And I wouldn't have mentioned it if it was too long ago. Right, yeah. Uh, the one bit that made me think, fucking hell, these are beasts. You know, when they were just like punching the fuck out of each other in the middle of the ring? Yeah. It looked pretty brutal. It, I, I'm sure it wasn't, like, but it looked fucking legit, didn't it? Um, yeah. I really enjoyed Don Morocco doing the Mr. Perfect fucking neck flip gimmick. Oh, know, yeah. When you go, yeah does that, that'll pop for that. Um, the uh, Slick hands Butch this object, which, you know, most circumstances, they're handed an object, they use or at least attempt to use the object. Yeah. But this wasn't used straight away, was it? You no. know, it was kind of concealed a bit. And then all of a sudden, fucking boom. And then fucking game on for the natural end. Fucking Graham keeps distracting the referee, which isn't fucking helping your man here. Fucking Billy, he saw your life at. <laughs> Slick's happy now. Fucking pile driver, boom. Uh, Butch attempts to pin after everything. Um, Butch on top. Uh, Don's on now. Fucking bish bash bosh. Uh, Butch into the ring. Don's over. Butch, Butch goes into Slick and Don's over. Um, it surprised me that they put Don over, considering 
Butch is in a feud with fucking Billy Graham, I would have thought they would have fucking dragged it out a bit and had Butch over in the interest of getting Billy Graham over later on. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. no, I enjoyed this. I mean, it wasn't fucking pretty or, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, a, a 72 star Mountain, but it, it was fucking, you know, the psychology was good in it and very enjoyable. What about, what say you? Yeah, it, it was a decent, real, real decent match, and you covered basically everything that I was gonna say. But um, yeah, like I love Don Morocco. Like any, like I love. I'm a massive Don Morocco fan, anyway. So as soon as I seen this match pop up on YouTube, it was like I had to fucking. I didn't think you'd pick this one, so I thought I'll go with this one because Johnny ain't gonna pick this one. So. I was torn between this one or Tito. <laughs> yeah. Was my other choice this time period? Um, but yeah, I'm glad I went with that one. It's good fucking Don Morocco looked amazing as well, didn't he? Like fucking, like slim down and pretty fucking chiseled. Yeah, yeah, he's a fucking specimen. So now then, I'm on my fucking third one now. Yeah, which is April the fifteenth, nineteen eighty nine, versus Dickie Murdoch in the NWA. Yeah, I seen that one pop up, but I didn't pick that one. Uh, Dick does a promo about Bob Orton and Gary Hart, so clearly he's in some kind of feud. This is TV main event. Right. Uh, tough old, two fucking rough old boys in this. Teddy Long is the referee, who later became Doom's manager. Yeah. Bob Coddle and uh, Kevin Sullivan doing the commentary. Here I'm at Suitors with Butch Reed. Um, I'm seeing like glimpses of a fucking Teddy Long heel turn here. Because he's the referee, but he keeps bollocking Dick Murdoch for, you know, punching and shit. It's fucking awesome. Like, like I said earlier about fucking rules. They, they, this is clearly how they're enhanced. Um, but yet when Butch does it, he don't do a thing. So you can kind of, knowing what happens with fucking Teddy joining Doom. Uh, Butch is in control on the arm. Butch is getting away with fucking murder because Teddy Long don't give a shit what Butch does. Uh the ref gets distracted a lot, like a of a lot, so Butch can fucking do more dirty. Kevin Sullivan on the commentary is kayfabe and everything. Like, no, Teddy Long's doing a great job refereeing. Um, Dick Murdoch with the fucking... Dick Murdoch must be fucking £270 or whatever he is, but he drop-kicked fucking Butch Reed right on the snout. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking... He, he clocks Gary Hart. Bosh, Gary's gone. Dick is still on top. Um, Art get, uh, gets up on the apron again. He's fucking hooked in. In comes Gary Art. Um, now the referee's going ape shit like, you can't do that, bro. Um, in comes Bobby Orton. Boom, disqualification. Attack on Reed by Orton and Gary Art. And it's kind of left with Reed lying there dead with Orton, Dickie Murder. Uh, sorry, not Reed lying dead. With, with, Dicky laying dead and Reed Orton and Gary Hart being all fucking yay. Now, I don't really remember them as a team or Gary Hart even managing Bob Orton. So it must have been a brief one, if anything. But fucking what? Imagine a fucking Butch Reed and Bob Orton tag team. Fuck me. Okay, no, yeah. that's, like, that's like two contrasting styles, but fucking quite the combo, that. Mm, definitely that. Enjoyable. I really, I really like Dickie Murdoch. He just fucking his head scissors and stuff, like mm. proper good Dickie Murdoch. Right. What's what's your next one there, mate? Let's see if we can fucking get a, a new one. <laughs> <laughs> How many have you done? Three now or four? How many you done? What was that? What number was that you're on? I've done three. Now. I've got one more. Right. Okay. Yeah. So my fourth one is from the twenty first of April, nineteen ninety three. Against the warlord, um, uh, Germany. Yeah, that's the fucker. I was I've put Germany slash Austria with a question mark. I assumed it was Germany because I heard them fucking count in German. So I thought, yeah, it's got to yeah. be. Germany. Yeah. Um, have you seen this one? Yeah, this. Uh, this no, I, I haven't done it, but it's a, an an American promotion that went to like Germany and Austria. I've seen their sort of some of their full shows. They're really good. Bob Orton's on some of them. And uh, yeah. and Paul Diamond, I was and, never... uh, and several others like fucking Coco, uh, 
Hercules, I think. Yeah, some like some big names. Yeah, Cuban assassin. I was going to ask if you've uh, if you knew who it was because um, I can't remember the name of the promoter. Herb, someone, not Herb Abrams, but Herb, someone. I'll, I'll ask and, and and get back to you because yeah, I remember seeing there are some longer versions of the shows on on YouTube. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, like this... World Wrestling Superstars or some shit. Uh, some generic name, but right. Who okay. shows though? This match was fucking. Uh, this match was actually the longest match out of all the four. It's like eighteen minutes or seventeen minutes or something. Um, but this match was really good, and it was like they start with a real strong tie up, and then they start again with a real strong like start, you know, with another strong tie up and stuff. Um, Butch tries to slam him a couple of times. Warlord ends up slamming him. Um, finally, Butch gets the slam on him. Um, it's there's a there's a point in it where they do the old test of strength. A test of strength for lasts for fucking ages, but it's like it's really well done. Like they'll do it, fucking fifty fifty. Warlord will kick him down. So if, like Butch is the face. So like he's got Butch on his knees. Finally, Butch will come up. He'll fight up. He'll kick him again. He's down. Boom. Fucking working on him still. So fucking Butch is again on his knees. Finally, Butch will come up again. This time, Butch will kick Warlord. Fucking get him to the ropes and hits a massive monkey flip. Warlord takes a fucking beautiful monkey flip, like fucking Rey Mysterio there. And then fucking Butch turns around and then takes... Only one eye. (laughs) 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 And then fucking after the monkey flip, Butch does a bit of fucking showboat and turns around. Warlord fucking beat eards him. Massive clothesline takes his head right off. <laughs> fucking cut off. Like, fucking fantastic fucking spot that was. Um, I've also put here that, like, 93, you could say they're both kind of past their fucking best. But they're working like fucking... I've put... They're just literally showing you how you work because they're so fucking good at everything they're doing. It's out of the four matches, it's probably the crispest, like the one that just fucking it's probably the slowest as well, but it's just like the way they're working, they're doing it like right, how it should be done. Like look, you know, you you can just see by like, looking at it thinking, fucking these two guys are just old pros. They know what you know what I mean. They're nice and slow and they're literally getting the crowd into it and everything is done fucking perfectly. And the finish as well. I like the finish, it's simple. Um, he does the flying tackle, um, but then he goes for a, like a massive like the warrior splash for the finish. But Warlord gets his fucking knees up and then just fucking covers him for the three. Real simple, but real good. Great match though. Yeah. Um, I think it's more. It's going to be more our style as well because the crowd aren't getting wrestling on a regular basis, are they? Hmm. You know, it's it's fucking, it's like a, a more of a casual crowd because then like it's the first time they've seen that fucking show, isn't it? Yeah, you know, they're not going to have that show's not going to have TV there, and you know they might not know who the fuck Butch Reed is to be fair. So he's telling a story at the same time. Um, like a yes, yeah, just just like you know what I mean, like a camp, yeah. Like, yeah, just the way they're working it and doing the yeah, old really yeah. old, you know, but. Old pro, don't they? Hey. So he was against. That was what? Was that April? Uh, yeah, April ninety-three. All right. So my last one is October third of October ninety-three, um, and he's in the WCW. Um, oh. So he's just wrestled the Warlord of the Powers of Pain. Here he's tagging with Barbarian, <laughs> and I, I was drawn to this fucker, right? Because Warlord, uh, sorry, Butch Reed and the Barbarian as a team, I can I can get that, I can understand that. They're against Z Man and Jimmy Garvin. Uh-huh. Who the fuck put them together? That's the fucking rare one, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I read that with the exception of Super Brawl One, where he, sorry, Super Brawl Four, where he makes a, a, a TV appearance. Like, um, this is Jimmy Garvin's last. WCW TV. Um, Z and the Barbarian start standard sort of big against small kind of shit going on. 
Larry Zabisco and Tony Schiavone on the commentary. Two tackles, third one, there's a kick from Barbarian, fucking knock Z-Man's head into Rogue fucking Z4. Um, Z-Man, oh, sorry, Barbarian's then tagged in. It all slows down a little bit. Z-Man takes the leg as a cut-off on the barbs. In comes Butch in his long doom tights at this point, in his yellow boots. Cactus Jack then comes to the ring, who is put over on commentary as Barbarian's mentor. What a fucking combination that is. Kevin <laughs> Cactus Jack is your mentor. Um, Jim is in for the rocker style tags. We're quite a long way in the match, bear in mind, at this point, but now it's Jimmy in for the rocker style tags. Uh, Jim and Butch, very good, very simple. Uh, you know, the slam and the fucking kickoff and all that, heart, you know, arm drag shizzle. Jimmy's on the arm. Uh, Reed tries to slam him. Jimmy holds the arm. I like that one. Uh, Z-Man gets heat. Then there's heat on Z-Man after he comes in and fucks the whole system. Um, Barbarian batters Z outside the ring. Uh there's a knee lift from the Z-Man after a backdrop attempt on Reed. Fucking boom. To Butch, is, uh, Butch is down now. Z's down. Hot tag. In comes Barbs. In comes Jimmy Garvin. There's a slam to Jimmy at some point. And then Butch is up for the shoulder. One, two, three. We're home. Uh, yeah, quite quite a fast-paced all, all action. You know, Jimmy Garvin as a babyface seemed a bit out of place after seeing him as a villain for fucking years in the Freebirds. But, you know, they had, I suppose, the year before he was quite a, you know, he was a baby face for the Freebirds. But uh, Z-Man and, and Jimmy Garvin, no fucking idea what they were doing as a team. Um, put them as a team on a fucking house show, but who decided that was a good idea on a TV? But, yeah, yes. uh, I enjoyed it. Good one. And Butch Reed and Barbarian, I could see fucking being a proper, you know, legit long-term team, you know what I mean? yeah. They look yeah, totally similar. They kind of wore the same. They're the same sort of style They're both fucking, you know, barbaric, aren't they? Yeah, good peeps. That sounds good like peeps. a good peeps. Yeah. So that was Butch Reed. Yeah, love me some Butch Reed. Um, he's from I purposely Reed. stayed away from the doom thing. You are? Again? I'm just saying... I purposely um, stayed away from doom. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did as well, yeah. Because cause I thought, well, I'll probably do Doom at some point anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was just going to say fucking Butch Reed is incredibly, like, underrated. Like, you know, who the fuck mentions Butch Reed when they talk about wrestlers of the past? You know what I mean? You know, just never hear that name pop up. But fuck, he's so good. So athletic as well for a big guy. Like, so athletic. Like, so talented. See, the first match, the first match I saw was 85 in this thing. And the yeah. second ninety three. So we've gone. I've gone eight year stretch there. Yeah. And you went long. You went ten year stretch, didn't you? Yeah. But he never really changed in any way. No. No, not at all. He, would, he slowed down for the bar better for the warlord match. I get that, but that could have been more because of the warlord than the barbarian. You know, because warlord's a fucking beast of a man, and like we said, the the German crowd. Why fucking bump your ass off when you don't need to? Yeah. Exactly. Um, but, you know, he, uh, he didn't slow down in any way. He didn't change his style in any way. Even as a baby face and then a villain, or, uh, you know, the style was the same. Yeah, yeah. banger. Butch mm -hmm. Reed's a winner. Oh, always. Uh, Wednesday is Invasion 2001, which I've watched already. Mm -hmm. um, Friday is Too Much slash Too Cool, Brian Christopher and, and Scott Taylor. Uh, next Monday, then I'll pick. Uh, it's my pick, isn't it, for singles, man? I've been fucking yeah. racking my brain, and I've I've got. Uh, I had a short list of about seventy-two fucking people that I wanted to watch. Um, but I've gone with Lanny Poffo. <laughs> I thought about choosing him when I chose Butch Reed. He'd cross my mind. He literally right. crossed my mind. But like, I chose Butch Reed. He was. But Reed was kind of like the first person I thought of, but something in my mind did say Lanny Poffo, and it was close to being him, but I went with Butch in the end. Um, so. Yeah, so yeah, genius, Lanny Poffo. Fucking shitloads to choose from there, because, you know, he, Poffo's, his dad's promotion, Memphis. Um, 
I think he had about nine years in the WBF as the genius as well. There's several independent ma- independent matches on on YouTube as well of what he's done since. So plenty to choose from. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that's next Monday. We'll see everybody Wednesday for Invasion of 2001. Um, which I've, I, you know, I fuck it. I remember it at the time, and I remember really enjoying it. And I've already watched it, and it wasn't as enjoyable as I remember. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see everyone then. See you later.